Moles, Molar Mass, and Avogadro's Number, Part 2. Okay, so in our last presentation, we talked about converting between mass and moles, and the reverse, moles to mass, and we also talked about converting from moles to number of particles, and its reverse. Now we're going to talk about interconverting between mass and the number of particles, which means that we're going from something that we can measure, see, and that would be something in the macroscopic world, to something that we can't see in the microscopic world, i.e. the number of particles, or molecules, or atoms, or whatever we're looking at. And the bridge between these two worlds is the mole. Okay, so let's look at an example to illustrate this. So we're going to go all the way from mass of nitrogen dioxide to number of particles. So here's our little problem. So how many molecules of nitrogen dioxide are there in 15.4 grams of nitrogen dioxide? Okay, so you've seen a lot of these steps before, and now we're just going to start stringing them together to solve one whole problem. And so the first step here, we start with mass, and we know moles are the bridge, so we're going to have to convert mass to moles, and we're going to use the molar mass of nitrogen dioxide. So if we calculate it, then doing just the same thing we did before, take one nitrogen, its molar mass, two times the molar mass of oxygen, since we have two in nitrogen dioxide, and we're going to get 46.005 grams per mole. And then let's go ahead and use that molar mass to convert our 15.4 grams of nitrogen dioxide to moles of nitrogen dioxide. Okay? And just as a reality check, so 46.005 grams makes up a whole mole of nitrogen dioxide, and we can see that we have 15.4 moles, so it makes sense that we'd end up with about 0.33 or about one-third moles of nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so now we're in moles, all right? So now we're going to convert moles to number of particles. And remember, we just use Avogadro's number for that, okay? So we take our moles of nitrogen dioxide and use the conversion factor. One mole of nitrogen dioxide is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of nitrogen dioxide. Now if we go ahead and multiply these two guys together, then we're going to end up with 2.02 times 10 to the 23rd mole molecules of nitrogen dioxide. So again, think to yourself, does this make sense? All right, so we have about a third of a mole. There's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd in a whole mole, and now we're around 2.02 .02 times 10 to the 23rd. So that definitely makes sense. Okay, so here's just a little summary slide. And it's just to remind you that moles are the bridge, okay? So here's our mass. Here's our number of particles, okay? And to go from either direction, to, you know, to go from number of particles to mass, to go from mass to uh, number of particles, we always have to go through moles. And we're going to see this in stoichiometry also, that moles, or the mole ratios, are extremely important. Okay? So, um, and actually essential and central in being able to solve the problem. All right, so for mass, we're going to go, we're going to use the molar mass to convert to moles. Okay? And then, if we start from number of particles, we're going to use Avogadro's number to get to moles, okay? And of course, that works in the reverse. If we start in moles, use Avogadro's number to get to the number of particles. And if we start in moles, we can use the molar mass to get back to the, the mass, all right? And so this is what you should master and practice with, you know, basically being able to go all the way one direction, all the way the other direction, realizing when you're starting with moles so you don't need the molar mass if you're calculating the number of particles, or if you're starting with moles, then you do need the molar mass to get back to the mass of the substance. So just remember, moles are the bridge. Okay, so let's look at another example conversion, okay? Now we have 5.56 times 10 to the 24 phosphorus atoms, all right? So how many grams of phosphorus do we have? So how big a pile is it? Do we have any idea? We really don't know until we do the calculation. So let's go ahead and take this number of particles and convert it to moles using Avogadro's number. Now, 
remember, in this instance, it doesn't matter what we have, okay? We, we're starting with phosphorus atoms, but they could have been potassium atoms, they could have been pencils, they could have been anything, okay? And we're gonna, just going to use Avogadro's number to get to moles. And so we're going to start off with our 5.56 times 10 to the 24th phosphorus atoms. And there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd phosphorus atoms and one mole of phosphorus atoms, okay? So if we take this number, which we notice is larger than Avogadro's number, divide it by Avogadro's number, since this is on the bottom, the phosphorus atoms cancel out, and we end up with 9.23 moles of phosphorus atoms, okay? So that's a lot. Okay, so... Now we're going to go ahead and take the moles of phosphorus that we just calculated and we're going to convert it to mass because that's what the question was asking us. How many grams of phosphorus do we have? We know how many moles we have, but we don't know how much, how many grams we have. All right. So we're going to do use the same procedure that we used before. We're going to convert moles of phosphorus to mass using the molar mass of phosphorus. Okay. So that's down here. Okay. So here's phosphorus. And we have 9.23 moles of phosphorus, all right? In one mole of phosphorus, there are 30.973 grams. And so if we multiply these two guys together, then we're going to get 286 grams of phosphorus. Okay, so here's a problem for you to do, okay? How many tungsten atoms are present, and notice it says atoms, are present in a 51.8 gram sample of tungsten 3 oxide? And that's W2O3. That's the formula for that. Okay, so pause the presentation and give it a try. Okay, we started off with mass. Okay, so we, need, we know that we need to go to numbers of molecules and then numbers of atoms. So we have to go through moles. All right, so might as well right away calculate the molar mass because we see we're starting off with a, ma a mass. And so let's go ahead and do that. Here's the, the molar mass for tungsten is 183.84, okay? And there are three oxygen. We've seen oxygen a lot, okay? So if we add all that up, then we're going to get 415.7 grams per mole of tungsten 3 oxide, okay? So let's now go ahead and convert that to moles. So we take our 51.8 grams of tungsten oxide and we're going to divide it by its molar mass and we're going to end up with 0 0.1246 moles of tungsten oxide okay so now we're in moles all right we're at, at the top of our bridge okay so now now that we have moles now we can convert to numbers of molecules okay and so again now it doesn't matter what we have in this case we have tungsten oxide but we could have anything and so we're just going to use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So we start off with 0.1246 moles of tungsten oxide. Well, in one mole of tungsten oxide, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules or units, you know, in this case. And we're going to end up with 7.504 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of tungsten oxide. Okay, so now ask yourself, are we done? And we go back and we look at our problem and we see that it's asking for tungsten atoms. And this is not tungsten atoms, okay? So we're not quite there, all right? So what do we need to do now, all right? So remember from the previous presentation, when you want to figure out the number of atoms, you need to look at the formula, okay? The chemical formula for the substance, all right? So we're going to ask ourselves how many tungsten atoms per molecule, okay? And so we can see that there are two, all right? So this is how many molecules we have. We, for every one molecule of tungsten oxide, we end up with two tungsten atoms, all right? And then we're going to get 1.50 times 10 to the 23rd tungsten atoms. Now, again, significant figures. We started off with three. We end with three. I carried a few more throughout the problem. It makes it a little bit more accurate, okay? And then... Now we're going to end up, we're going to round at the very end. So 1.50 times 10 to the 23rd tungsten atoms. 